On the program tonight, would a firework help to sort out this? I don't think so. Horrible job this. Let's get maggots on it. In Dagenham, drain busters prepare for a dress rehearsal. Right, I'm not saying I watch a lot of Space Invaders, but I just like dressing up like one. In Preston, the forces of good unite against evil. Fly tipping is a sin. And in Wolverhampton, one of our biggest stars makes a comeback. It's only me! But first, in Dumfries in Scotland, extreme cleaner Steve has been called to an abandoned flat. The property's been left in a pretty nasty state, so it's, uh, we have been called in to clear out and, and uh, deep clean it. Steve's an expert on bad conditions. He's got the gear, and on this occasion, he's going to have to use all of it. It could be worse. <laughs> but not by much. As you can see in here, the kitchen's in a very bad state. Insects, lots and lots of them. Steve can only guess at how people manage to live here. Those kids here and a, and a mother, and they've left it in this condition. We're looking at this cooker here, uh, and to, to think that somebody was cooking and feeding kids off this is, it's really unacceptable, isn't it? So it's... There's no surprise in the evidence of drug misuse. There's spoons, etc., lying next to the bed. It's always alarming. Uh, so that's, that's an area we really need to take care of uh, when we're cleaning up. Steve's experience now pays off. His first trick? A smoke bomb. This is a procedure, the smoke bombing. This is a small canister. Uh, we open it and we just light it. So they better actually make their way out now. This should wipe out the entire insect world. But what about Steve? Well, that's all right. Now the warning sign. So you will put a bit of biohazard bio tape onto the door, uh, just in case any neighbours not come out and want to wander in. <laughs> in the wrong hands, this could be dangerous. After all, there's no smoke without fire. You can go for a wee cup of tea. <laughs> In Dagenham, drain cleaning team Bill and Simon are answering an emergency call from a Mr Jolly, who's not feeling at all jolly. Right, Dame Cancer, what's your problem? Uh, you Drains are blocked problem? again. When I, when I say again, it's about seven times, eight times a year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I'm getting a little bit fed up with it now. The water feature is still all right, but the main drain isn't. When we first moved here, that manhole cupboard actually lifted and we had raw sewage going all the way down the garden. And that's what I don't want no more. It needs to be sorted now because it's an health hazard. Right, let's have a look here then. It is an health hazard now. It's absolutely beyond the joke. Well, that seems to be OK, but not to an expert. It smells damp, doesn't it? That means there's uh, fresh water leaking into it. I don't, I don't believe it's fresh water, honest to God. Uh, it, if, you, if you could, I know what you're saying. I know what you're saying, saying. I know, but it's, I'm pouring it, bleach down the drain. Yeah. It's probably not six times a day. It's probably now. not causing the block. It ain't. It's, it's, no, it's, it's crap all it is, it's fresh because water, the pipe work is too yeah. small. Block drains are block drains, but techniques vary. We're going to plunge it first, the interceptor. It's, yeah. a, it's a swung net. We can't put the jet up there because we put the jet up there, we can blow it all up. So what we do, we're going to Perhaps put... That might be a good idea, I might get something done. <laughs> yeah, well, practically, yeah, I suppose so. But however sophisticated you are, nothing beats brute force. But force on its own is sometimes not enough. Can't get in there. Get kitted, Bill. I'm not saying I watch a lot of Space Invaders, but I just like dressing up like one. All right, you ready, Bill? Do I look good? Give me banana soup. Ready, Sly? Run in. You don't need to make a drama out of this, but it does help. It makes it seem properly important. That's code for I think we've got something down here. 
In this business, what goes around comes around. Wet wipes. As you can see, that is the wipes. It's causing the problem. The froth is yet another sign of things going wrong. It's a combined of soap powder and fat when it goes like concrete, it's like mixing up concrete. And just all it does is it just sits in the pipe and it just builds up and builds up and it just goes block. It's the jet that's doing the work and the drain's cleared. So there's a happy end. But how jolly is Mr Jolly? I'm happy. I'm happy. Till next month. <laughs> then it'll be back out again. <laughs> Guaranteeing the future isn't possible, but today the clouds have parted. Thanks for See you later, mate. Thank you. Bill and Simon have brought a bit of sunshine to this part of Dagenham. Back in Dumfries, Steve has used a smoke bomb to fumigate. Like a neutron bomb, everything is intact, but all the insects are dead. As you can see, guys, it's a very effective method. Uh, you can see the flies, it's dead everywhere. Phase one is over, but now it's time for phase two. OK, guys. Meet the special ops team, Steve's wife Sue and friend Jane. It's worse than they thought. It's not a pretty sight at all. This is really is quite shocking, actually. You wonder how people can live like this. Um, obviously, there was young children amongst all this, which is really not not good. Yeah, with all the kids' toys and stuff. It's yeah, everything's just, just left. I mean, it's a, a little boy's bike on a little girl's bike there. Right, so we'll clear the passage in here. Now the team go into action. Upstairs, they've got to be especially careful. As we can see, there's a a few sharps on the floor there. Chances of HIV, hepatitis B, all different uh, types of diseases you can pick up. Even with their experience, there's still surprise that people can live like this. Because I'm a mum myself, so it, it's, it's hard to think if, if I was in this situation, you know, why did they take drugs or what made them go there? In a way, I'm glad. I, I really don't know, because I think I would just uh, be more upset if you knew the whole story. You have, you've just got to switch off. It's got to be done. It's a job that's got to be done. And that's it. We just come in, we do it, and we go home. They can't afford to sympathise too much. There's work to be done. We'll get used to it. I mean, we do this on a daily basis, so we don't tend to look at pictures or mail or anything like that. We just... Put our heads down, go ahead and do the job. So we, do. Uh, we come in and work hard. I mean, a lot of people couldn't do this job, but at the end of the day, it's, it has to be done. For grime fighters, it's the sense of achievement which keeps them going. Way down to the south, in Brockholes Wood near Preston, all seems peaceful, but it isn't. Fly tippers have turned a rural dream into a nightmare for the locals. When I was a boy, I loved playing in the woods, but I, I wouldn't like to play in them today. Some of the locals have decided to fight back and become grime fighters for the day. You know what you're doing, you're doing a clean-up, we've all done them before, but we have to be careful of a number of things. Firstly, sharps, don't pick a needle up yourself. The same with glass, if you see any sharp, anything sharp like glass, don't pick it up. That's a warning about dirty needles bringing disease. Residents and tenants would be very annoyed if they came and chucked rubbish right in their path. I'm sure they would, but yet yeah, they'll sit in the house and watch them dumping on our greenery. People just seem to think it's a good idea to get rid of all the rubbish into the woods, uh, out of sight, out of mind, but eventually it has to come back out again. Fly tipping is a sin, you know, it shouldn't be allowed. One of the problems we have is being able to recognise who's actually doing this. There are ways in which we can find out who's responsible, but with something like that teddy over there, there's nothing there that tells us who did that. We've just got to take it out. There you go, put that in there then. What the volunteers lack in experience, they make up for in cheerfulness. One arm's better than none. I don't know where we'd be without her, it's that simple. It never ceases to amaze me, the, the 
amount of enthusiasm and motivation and determination in, in the local people when it comes to looking after the, the green spaces. And I want to keep on top of it with everybody else. This generation have known hard times and they know what has to be done. Oh, yes. <laughs> Coming up, in the flat in Dumfries, there's still a long way to go. That's so good. A son gives his father the chance to feel on top of the world. And an old favourite of this programme reveals his secret. You've always got to have a good woman behind you on this job. Throughout the country, an army of professionals are continuing to dedicate their daily lives to waging war on the nation's grime. And one grime fighter is rather special. Hi. It's only me. Yes, he's back. It's Lou, the litter picker from Wolverhampton. For a time, Lou was out of action, but he just couldn't stay away. Yes, sir, I've been off for a few weeks, you know, with the old shoulder and I've had a few knee problems. It's probably because I'm getting old, it's probably wear and tear on the old body. I'm having physio on it and I do an exercise at home every day and uh, I do the washing up at night. Oh, and I'll tell you something else, I don't do any fishing anymore. I've sold my gear, I can't do it no more. I've got me a little dog, ain't I? Hey. Had it 12 months, bought it there for Valentine's Day. Little Yorkshire Terrier, absolutely wonderful. The puppy and the wife, a family. This is my little Jelly, all it does is sit at home playing with my little dog. But she looks after me, I'll tell you what, she's one in a million. You've always got to have a good woman behind you on this job. Right, I'm proud of her, mate. And he's also proud of the puppy. You've got to laugh. You'll always find there's a lot of litter on this street because people chuck it on the road, don't they? <laughs> I don't know. While he's been away, nothing much has changed. Now look at that. Already we've only just come a couple of hundred yards and that's it, that's off the street. You've got cans, what's even bottles, glass, crisp packets, you name it, it's in the bag. They just chuck the litter down on the road. But not to worry, we've got these. We pick the litter up with these. Litter breeds litter. Like, look at that. Now, if you ring the council up, they'll come and take that away for you. Just a batter of a pound call. Now, look at this. Where's that going to end up? Even in these quiet streets, there can be drama. Sounds like we've got an overactive blackbird doing us a bit of a love song in the street. Who needs Neighbourhood Watch with Lou about? So I'm going to check round the back in case somebody's climbed in the back. You never know. Hello, anybody there? Back in Dumfries, Sue is tackling the kitchen and the mess gets to her. That's so good. On the stench, rotten eggs and... That's just fat, obviously just cooking meat or whatever and decided to, <laughs> to leave it there. I don't know, I've, I've, that's the worst cooker I think I've ever seen. I mean, how, how can you possibly you know, make anything for your children on there? I mean, it's, well... This husband and wife team have been partners in grime for 10 years, ever since they met on holiday in Greece. How wonderful that was. It was all in my life. So it was. <laughs> no, I was only kidding, so it was. <laughs> <laughs> we don't argue. Yeah, we do. Good, good team. Successful teamwork depends on deciding who does what? And Sue has plenty of faith in Steve. I, I think I'll leave that for my husband. He specialises in removing stinky minky. It's really bad, it's blue. <laughs> oh, that's, I passed that on to someone that's more professional than myself. <coughs> oh. A horrible job, that. Everybody, 
and about in the cleaning industry. Try to avoid this job. Let's get maggots on it. Unbelievable. Is that it? Thank take you. Take, yes. the, take the door shut. Yes. For Sue and Steve, it's not really about who wears the trousers. It's about sharing the load. It's not a pleasant job. Uh, I mean, anybody watching this programme will see. Um, you clean up in filth. But at the end of the day, it, it pays the rent. It pays your mortgage. There's so much grease. I've had to spray and it's just been layers and layers and layers and it's still there, but it's come there. Three people, one day, and now a total transformation. This flat will soon be home to a new tenant. It's a big difference, guys. Uh, if we first come in, the nine o'clock this morning. This shows you what a bit of hard work can do. Another good job done. On the streets of Wolverhampton, Lou is quite pleased to have been distracted by the burglar alarm. Hello, anybody there? No. Looks all peaceful and what have you. <laughs> Obviously, if you see something like that happen, knock the door, see if there's any problems, see if you can help them out. Uh, that's me, I'll help anybody, and uh, it's part of the done thing in today's society. Unfortunately for Lou, it's a false alarm. He's got to get back to work. Anybody about? Make me a cup of tea. Oh, look at this rubbish, eh? Let's get on. Even without company, Lou can manage to amuse himself. Look at this, here. Here you are. That's probably a methadone bottle. Of course, it wasn't like this in the old days. And look at that. There seems far too much packaging these days. There you are, the old vodka bottle eight. It's been a few years since I've had a, a touch of uh, vodka. I'll tell you what I do like that, right? <laughs> Your little tipple of Lambrewski. I'll tell you what, it's a nice drink, that Lambrewski is. Hello, my dear, all right, have you? Lou sees himself as more than just a litter picker. Good morning. He's an ambassador for Wolverhampton. Hello, hey, kid. All right, am you? You're looking well. Have you been bad? Could he be an MP? Do you well, always I... walk through here, do you? Yes, I do. But and what is... do you think of this rubbish? I don't like it at all. It's absolutely yeah. terrible, isn't it? It may be a thankless task that Lou does, but he doesn't see it that way. He's proud of the work he does. And I'll tell you something. I've been here now. Almost six years. And it's the best job I've had. I go home at night and I feel satisfied. Over in Blackpool, father and son rubbish team Steve and Steve are answering an emergency call. We've been called out to a hotel in Blackpool. Uh, the drains are blocked up full of fat and grease from the, the previous tenant. So we're just going to go and have a quick look. That's the problem. Father Steve is still suffering from an injured arm, but like a great general, he fights on. I better show them in and put some gloves on. <laughs> Make you think I'm going to do a bit, but I'm not. His army is small, it's just his son, but he gives orders. Twist it. You still haven't got the hang of it, son, have you? And it's stuck. Pull it to one side. Pass it on. He's telling me that as if he's, no, he still, knows what he's doing. He's, I know what I'm doing. He just feels he has to have his input. He still needs me here. Every day, supervising. Hey. He would have never got that out without me. Let's, just go, go show some jazz hands. Again. Supervision hands. Supervision hands. Manual hands. Come on. Get it cleaned down. Come on. <laughs> I love it when a plan comes together. That is a really nice touch. Well, that was simple enough. But hang on a moment, that wasn't part of the plan. Oh. It was spoke too soon, Stevie boy. We basically let the cigar a little bit too early this time. It's time to get wet knees. Oh. And you say there's no commitment in this. Wet knees, minging hands, 
to do anything for this company. Hello. Is that a smell? <laughs> Son Steve returns to the fray. Without Dad, it might have been easier. Dad's OK, but he can't be totally trusted. Off, turn it off. Father Steve was ready to take the credit, but now it's a question of who takes the blame. <sighs> not, not happy. What have I just said? Not, not, I love not, it not, when, not quite. It's like the like A-team. I love it when a plan comes together and it hasn't, has it? A great general sometimes has to get off his high horse. Like the master, just feel the baby. Steve celebrates victory in his typically modest way. Fuck oh, off. <laughs> Another job done. In time, Big Steve will have to give way to Little Steve, but not straight away, surely. Come on. Don't run off. Don't jive off. Come on. No, come on back. Come back. Come on. Be psyched. 